and we shout hallelujah 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 you may be seated hallelujah what a great blessing yes and not only a great blessing but a tremendous privilege that your grants unto Yisraya that we may come before his presence and offer unto him the offerings that are pleasing unto him as Yah says that a haran will always minister before him to minister the covenant truth unto Yisraya and any messenger today he must speak after the order of a haran that he must reveal and make known unto us as a nation a people the purity of torah that we will be conscientious aware of what yah speaks that is important and we are conscious of what yah speaks when he speaks unto us we will have no doubt we will not have to ponder we will not have to consider if it's right wrong if it's truth or if it's fallacious false we will know that it is his imat, his truth. We shall yada. You cannot just perceive that you understand the truth, but we must yada. We must experience, we must know. It must be a part of our growth. We will yada his imat, truth. And then it is the power of the understanding of the truth that makes us free that there is no will to sin. We must perfect that which remains. And we know that this time of the season, before the great trumpet blows of Yam and the gathering or the ingathering of Yisra'ya, it is a time of inspection. As our Zachin Yaramaya Yisra'ya, our Zachin, our leader, as he brought out unto us on last night the value and the importance of the time, the season of Almighty Yah, the labor, the toil, it must be a toilsome labor in order to get ripened fruit. You cannot, Yisrael, spend a small amount of time in a garden, a gun, and expect for the fruits to be ripened because the very foreign elements will overtake it. The weeds and all those kinds of elements uh, will destroy the lusciousness uh, of the first fruit. What he is inspecting today is the first fruit. He has come to gather and to see if the first fruit, if they are ripened, if it is our best, if we are offering unto him the very best that we possess. We understand that Yisrael is the first fruit of Almighty Yah. And we know that we are the people is the first love of Almighty Yah. For he clearly states that unto us that we would know that. We love him not because we have the ability to love. We love him because he first. He was our first love and our first love unto him is Yisra'ya. So we are the first fruit after the mighty power of Yahshua, as he rose from the depths of Sheol, of hell, the grave, to present unto Yah the first fruit of the offering. Now that is what Bechor or Sha'ut, Sha'utvat, what is all about Pentecost. It is about the first fruit. Now we can see the first fruit that were offered unto Yah on the Sha'ut when they all gathered in the bed of Yah. When the Ruach of Yah was poured out in a dynamic and mighty way. They were gathered from every nation on the Hashemayim. And then as the Ruach came upon them as a mighty fire, they began to speak in the language of those that did not understand the perfect Torah of Yah. And they began to speak unto them of the essence of the first fruit of Yah, the first pouring out of the Ruach HaKodash. So these gatherings and times we cannot take them lightly, Yisra'ya. 
It is vitally important that we understand the value of what Yah constitutes in the book. And we cannot alleviate anything. We must do all because he commands us to do that. I want to begin here on this Shabbat, this Shabbaton. This is a time of rest. And we should rest in the Torah of Omar Yam. As Azakain said to us last night, every last one of you all have the same access to Torah, to the definitives of words as I do. Now maybe I may spend a little more time than you, but you have the same access. And we're without any excuses at all. As the old song says, we've been running for a long time. But the end of our journey, it is at near. It's coming to an end. I do want to read this brief letter that I received yesterday. It says, from a precious act, he says, I told you, my friend, for all of your hard work in Scripture, so that someone like me can understand Yah's simple truth for his people. That one can understand the beauty of Yah's revelation. You're not going to understand that Yisra'ya unless it is made plain unto us. And it will take a laboring heart and purpose to reveal unto Yah's people the very intricates, the value of his Torah. And we must do that. We must labor. For the night comes when no man can work. And we're in the season of Hoshech, whereby the minds are mentally oppressed and spiritually oppressed. We don't even think right today. We can't even rationalize uh, in the spiritual realm because uh, we are so inundated with these carnal attributes that always diametrically oppose the arm. And anything that we conjure or think in our own mind, it is not of Yah. Our minds must be trained by Torah. It must be Yisrael. That's why we have missed the boat. We have all fallen overboard. Just like Hepha when he saw Yahshua walking on the sea. And that simply implies also the sea of the masses of the people. And when he bid him to come, and he began to come, he began to doubt that. And when we began to doubt the word of Yah, we're going to sink into the masses of the people. We will become like them and do like them. And that's what the sea represents more than just the water. He gave us the power to walk above and walk on the sea of the masses of the people. We must, we must in all our desire comply to what Yah commands us, Yisrael. We love him because he first loved us we are the first love of yah and that is what this because the first fruit represents it is the gathering of Yisrael that scattered under the four winds of the four governments and the powerful judicial orders that have been upon the face of the earth the medio persian the Babylon, the Roman, and this vile conglomerate of all the governments today that is compiled in what we call this democracy, this system of democracy. It is corrupt. It is vile. You cannot engage in this system and expect to produce the very puree or the fruit of Omaniyam. You cannot produce that Yisra'ya. That's why we must come out of her and be ye separate. We must separate ourselves. And that is simply we are not walking complicitly in the order of the world. You don't do things the way uh, the world does things. You make sure that you do it differently according to the Torah of Omar. I want to begin the, here in the book of Nehum by the Nobi, the prophet that speaks and prophesies unto us I want to begin with this specific word, the return or the shub, the shub, the return, the changing, the coming back. And that's what this day represents, that Yisra'ya, we come back with the first fruit of our offering. 
that we show Almighty Yah how we appreciate what He has done with our sheaf offering, the two loaves, as we offer our hands and we raise our hands, our mind, our hearts unto Yah to show Him all of our appreciation what he has done for us. It is a ripened, fervent expression unto him, not something that is mediocre. It is the best that we have to offer. It is not something that we feel or have the sense of not willing to do. We do it forthrightly. With all willingness, Yah, everything that Yah spoke unto us, it is valuable. And we must hear because every word uh, is pure. That is why the enemy raised up this, uh, this spirit of whoredom that we find in what we call Christendom. It gives you a free will, but it doesn't give you a free will. It brings you under bondage. I'd rather have the will of Yah, the one that made me, the one that created me, the most high, than to have a free will. For the will of Yah is not a will of bondage. It's a will of life. It's a will of strength. It's a will of assurance. Because there's one thing. You with all of your free will, you're going to die. And me walking in the will of Yah, I'm going to cease in this life, Yisrael. So I'd rather know the will of Yah and walk in Yah's will uh, than to walk in what I call a free will. What is a free will? What are you free to do? We are poor. We're naked. We don't have a damn thing. So what is so free about what we are doing? We have no free will. You're going to give uh, charge and authority unto Yah or unto Hashatan. You have no power within yourself to do nothing. Everything that you do has been shaped by the world or has been shaped by Yah. It's I the one or the other. You don't shape nothing. You have not shaped anything. Nothing at all. You're not the originator of anything. Yah is the originator of all things. So let us allow the Torah to shape our minds and our hearts. Shape our will. The gathering of the first fruit. We know that Shaut symbolizes the gathering of Kol Yisra'ya and the restoration that's why we come to this time that Yah shows us as we began uh, at uh, Pesach, at uh, Matzvah, to see if we have really, during the course of that time, uh, truly examined our bosom, yes. to see if there was anything offensive unto Yah. And it is a time of preparation, it is a time of cleansing. As we began to garden, we first plow the fields constantly, every chance we get, three or four, five times. To do what? To kill every weed you can. You don't get them all. Huh? But we try our best to get every weed you plow. And then we take what we call the, the tine. It is a huge subsoil. Huh? And it busts down through the subsoil or the crescent of the earth huh? to allow the water to flow. Now the only way the living substance of the Ma'am, the waters of Yah, will flow, and that is the power of living Torah flow through us, we must break up this fallow ground, this heart that is hardened, that is encased, enamored with sin, it must be plowed under, it must be impelled, it must be destroyed, it must be brought down. And so that is the process. You subsoil and then you plow again. Then you lay out the rows orally so that you will plant. And when it's time to weed, you can go again and weed without destroying the plants. So it is. Yah, give us 50 days to examine ourselves from Pesach. And to make sure that we have gone in allowed the hand of the Torah to cut and to dig deeply into the root and the depths of our bosom that the furrows are laid out and the sea began to sow. And when the sea began to be sown, then we come to this time of Shauts, of Bichor, the gathering of the first fruit. The first fruit. And then we look back and examine ourselves and see how far we have progressed and grown from that period of time. 
And if we do not see the progression, it's because the weeds have overtaken us. Our will, our minds, our purpose, our own desires have clashed with the will of Yah. And we say, damn what he says, I will do what I desire. And we see no evolutionary change or changes in our lives. Something is wrong. Something is drastically wrong. Something is wrong. As Isaac Cain said, there are us, you that have said you walked in this way for many years and there is nothing that has changed. And someone that is newly introduced, that even the desire and purpose is greater than yours. Something is wrong. I can see why Yahshua says that the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The Nabi speaks here so explicitly. Nahum chapter 2 verse 2. He says unto us, for Yahweh will shoot. I am appreciative of that because we know that Yahweh will return. I know how it is expressed in the KJV, all right? But if you analyze each word as we were proud and told last night, that you all have the same access to the same study material that I have, and we take that for granted and we do not exercise to take advantage of what is before us. Because sometimes in the writings of the ones we have, uh, the writing is just not clear. You don't understand the writings of what we call the KJV. You don't understand the writings uh, of the new or the new Yerushalayim or some of the texts of many of the texts. It is somewhat difficult to understand in the writing, but Yah has granted us a simple truth. It's not hard to understand this here, is it the mitzvah? It's not hard to understand nothing that is written up here. It is not difficult. And everything that is written here is the compilation of the compilation of the whole text. Everything in the text is based on what is written here. Everything in the text is based on what is written here in these ten lili mitzvah. The commands, everything, everything, everything in the book is based upon these 10 foundational principles. And everything you read will bring you back to the mitzvah, the commandments of Almighty Yah. It will bring us back to that, everything. The Nobi says, for Yah will restore it says that Yahweh has turned away in your text, if you're reading from that text. But it's implying that Yahweh restore, he's going to restore the excellency of Yahweh. He's going to restore the beauty, the strength of Yisrael. Yah is going to do that. You cannot do it, I cannot do it. Yah is the only one that can do that. As the excellent or the ga'un, the very power, the majesty, the exaltation of Yisra'ah. For the oppressors has trampled on them and they have destroyed their vine branches. It has destroyed the oppressor. We allow the one that oppress us, our own minds oppress us. Without branches, you will not have fruit at all. It is vital to understand that. We are the branches of the root of the tree. And if we do not bear fruit, as our Zarkin brought out last night, he came unto the fig tree, which represents Yisrael, and there were no fruit. And you're sure he cursed it. And if we're not bearing fruit in the gathering of this time, if our fruit is not ripen, there's a reason why. I will show us why. So without branches, if there is no branch, then where are the fruits? Why are we not the people of Yah? Why are we not fruitful? Because the branch is corrupt. And the branch is corrupt because the root is corrupt. Yisrael, our root is corrupt. We're not grounded and rooted in the Torah, the Chava of Omariah, 
we come to this occasion, there shall be an inspection before the great gathering of the people of Yah. That is what Shaut is for. It is the inspection to make sure that the fruit are ripened. And then when you prune and take care of the branches at the latter end of Sukhar, there is a great in gathering and there is still fruit on those trees. As I said to us earlier this year, I was discussing some farming with one of the most prolific farmers around here. The man has made millions of dollars. And if you saw the man, you would not think that he has made that kind of money. He's a, he's a huge man. His belly is grotesque, has no teeth in his mouth. And I said to him, I always address him as Mr. Clyburn. He's the man of the diaspora, see, uh, this, this barrel of a man. And I said to him, Mr. Clyburn, uh, this what happened last year in our gardens, and this, and this, and that. The first thing he asked me, do you have beehives? I said, not any at all. He says to me, get some beehives. He said, what you need to do. He says to me, he said, what you need to do, preacher. He said, you need to begin to apply the boron. It attracts bees. It helps the uh, flowering of the plant. And he gave me examples. He said, you should eat watermelons from your garden from the time you plant them. When they began to fruit and produce melons, you should eat them of those vines until the weather began to destroy them. You should have watermelons like that. Now, do I negate what this man says that has made a tremendous amount of money? That's the only thing the man has done, grown watermelons and fall. Do I negate that? I would be a fool to negate that. So do we negate the experience of a Nobi to tell us uh, that even our oppressors have oppressed us. Uh, we have allowed the mind of the oppressor to press us uh, whereby our vines or our branches are not bearing. So we come to a time like this uh, and the nature of Yah is not operating in us. So it's not serious. Uh, it's not a time whereby we think, oh, it's just another day. No, it's not another day. It is a time that we bring the first fruits. We show ya, we show ya that I've, I, I, I've dung around the tree. I, 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 I have dug around the tree. I have worked in the garden. I've worked in my mind. I've worked in my heart. I, I've eradicated. I've impelled things that cause me to oppose you, ya. That's what you will do. And then I, before our fruit will be ripened. And we will present unto you the best. I don't care how young, how small, how ignorant we are of the truth. We will bring him our very best, Yisra'ya. Unless you are because the wicked, the oppressor, they have trampled upon Yisra'ya. The everyday activities trample us and destroy our will and our desire for Yah. And because it has trampled upon us them and they have destroyed the vine branches. Yah, your shoe is the vine, and we are the branches. And if any branch brings forth not fruit, he cuts it off. He brings us to Shaut to show us what fruits we have, whether we're bearing, whether they're ripen, whether we have given you our best, because if you do not attend to the garden, you're not going to get anything. If you're not proactive, you cannot be reactive in a garden. If you try to be reactive as to how the weeds grow, they will overtake you overnight. You must always be proactive. You must always tend to the garden. I weed every time I go to the garden. I don't care if the tractor comes through and weed, I go and weed the whole thing again. Because that little bit of oppression, that little thing will, will rise up into a gigantuous thing uh, and produce an abundance of little babies. And then you're overtaken. We must suppress the oppressor by utilizing the strength of the mind of Yeshua HaMashiach. Let me show us an important thing. If you do not as Azakim brought out to us, Yoshua said, uh, the one said to the master, let me down the tree. 
If you do not be God at the root of the tree, uh, then you're not going to produce anything. Nothing is going to come, Yisrael. You got to deal with what's in the essence of the root of your own love. We must be God there. You must be God there. There are times I say to Yosef, I say, look, there are times you want to chop, and there are times you just want to slice the top off the weeds. The weeds that get bigger, you want to chop them. Why? Because you want to kill everything. You want to chop down in the little ground a little bit to chop the root as well. Because if you don't destroy the root, I tell you something is coming up. And when plants sense that there is an attack, they begin to produce more. More seeds. More. Because it is uh, the progeneration of its kind. And to sustain that, they must produce seeds. So that's what the enemy does. He produced all kinds of alternatives in our mind. We must hold fast to the Torah. Turn quickly to the book of Romeo. I want you to hear this quickly. It says in Romans chapter 11 verse 16. It says, for if the first fruit or the reishis, of the big core, the reishis, if the first fruit are kodesh, if they are set apart for Yah, they're set apart for the service of Yah. If the first fruit are kodesh, the lump also is kadosh or kodesh, so are the branches. So if the first fruit, uh, if they are kadosh, kodash, then also the branch is. And if the branch is kodash, then the lump or the substance of the first fruit, uh, it is the best, it is pure as well. Now if the root is corrupt, then the branch will be corrupt. And then if the branch is corrupt, the vine is corrupt. And if the vine is corrupt, the branch is corrupt, the fruit is corrupt. We try to gather things and we ought not to gather them. You can't gather the fruit of Yah. Listen, he's going to get the first fruit of everything. I will prove it out in the text today. All right. This is not just only the first fruit of the gathering or the regathering of Israel, but this is the first fruit of the wicked as well. Hallelujah. That's why this should be a time unto Yisrael as we offer the sheave offering our hands, the two loaves, as a haram offer unto Yah in this hour. And that is our hand, our will, our heart, our mind, and our heart to be lifted up unto Yah. I surrender. And that is an example of our hand, one representing what are the sheave offerings unto Yah. That's what it represents. So if the if the First fruit, does it say that in your text? The reshith. If the first fruit is kodesh or kadesh, then the lump is as well. And if the lump is that way, then so are the branches. He is the husbandman, is he not? Does the husbandman know when the harvest? We go to the garden, he is safe and I mainly. And what I say to him, he say, what about that? No, we leave that. I'm practicing husbandry. I know what to harvest. I know when to cut. I know when to get. So if the husbandry or the husbandman, does he know what fruit are ripe? He knows what fruit are ripe. He knows what he has sown. He knows what he has put in us. But if we have allowed the, every kind of thorn and wicked thing uh, to encroach upon that, we come to this season, we have no fruit at all, Yisra'ya. We have none at all. The soul went forth the soul seed. Did he not? And then the wicked one came and sowed tares as well. So Yah sowed the power of his Torah unto us. And we allow our own mind that is full of tares, poison, to sow in the midst of Yah's truth. When it comes time to harvest the first fruit, you can't harvest anything because the tares are there. You harvest the tares with the wheat. You eat, you're going to die. And that's what we're doing. We're harvesting the tear with the wheat. This is the time of the first fruit in the land of Yisrael. It is the time of the barley, the time of harvest. We see that when you drive down the roads. You drive down Highway 601. The fields are beautiful when they began to plant the wheat in the fall. And we understand even in that, in the fall of the year, when we see the planting around here, we're coming near the end of Yah's year as well. 
That is what the end gathering is. It is a time that is what Sukkoth. It is a time that you're coming to the end of the year. You have taken care of the gun, the garden. So you have much in the barn that will last you unto the first of the year to bring you unto the time of seed sowing. And we come to this time of harvest. It is vital for us to keep this conscience in our mind. See what the world does is sows tears. It sows the, the damnable feasts like Christmas uh, and Hog Day, Turkey Day, Thanksgiving, Valentine's, Father Day, Mother Day, Birthdays, Advent, all these damn days uh, and yet we are, uh, and these are vital to us. We are reminded of them. Uh, we remember them. We give close attention to them, don't we? When it comes to the more dim of God, we don't give a damn. We don't care, Yisrael. And that is the truth. My friends, so if, uh, if the root is Kodesh, then what will come out of the root will be Kodesh. If what is rooted in your heart is pure, then what fruit you will bring, it will be the best, Yisrael. Yah knows when to gather. He's going to gather his people on time. That we speak so profoundly as to when the season and the time of gathering, uh, when the husband man knows that, look quickly here in the book uh, of Hallelujah. Uh, I'm sorry, Shalomo, in, in Proverbs 10, 5. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 5. He says, he that, uh, uh, he that gathers, uh, and when one gathers, we harvest. And the more you harvest, I know what I'm harvesting in the garden. Uh, I don't get tired of doing that. I really do not. I don't get tired of cutting the broccoli or harvesting uh, the greens, the leaves. I do not get tired. I am a strutonizer when it comes to harvesting uh, even the cucumbers, the okra. We miss one here because it is vitally important. He that gathers, he that agar, he that gathers, or when one harvests, uh, he does it in the, in the summertime, in the hayits. He does it in the time of the summer where the summer fruit is abundant. Are we not even in this uh, realm of the earth? Are we not in the summertime uh, and the fruit is abundant? Whether it's the grass, we see the abundance uh, of the grass. We see the seeding and the reseeding uh, of the grass. Uh, so when one harvests, he harvests in the time whereby the summer fruit are ripened. So Yah grants unto Yisrael a time whereby we should have much summer fruit. We should be ripened, we should be rich in our ruach. We should be offering unto him the sheave offerings, the sacrifices from a heart that has been enriched, that has been plowed, and there is nothing there that offends Yah. Nothing. We must plow down into the depths of our bosom. The only way we're going to do that is by truth, by the Torah of Almighty Yah, Yisrael. And that's the truth. He that gathers in the summertime is a wise son. He that gathers in the summertime is a wise son. But he that sleep in the harvest is a son that caused shame. We are in the time whereby Yah is... And he is a wise one, is he not? So is this not the time of his harvest? We should not be asleep in this time. We should not be asleep. Even the birds are awake, the bees. I said to Ach, your safety of the day, he's listening to the sound of the birds. I'm listening to the humming of the bees. And I said to him, they buzzing all around me, around my head. I'm not afraid of bees or anything like that. They have a job to do like I was doing my job. And he was saying, they were saying, you're encroaching upon my pollination of your plant. Yes, sir, Mr. B. I will be right out of your way as I, as I cut the head of broccoli, all right? And so I said to Yosef, what a beautiful sound, man. He says to me, yes, the sound of the birds. I say, no. I'm talking about the sound of the bees. The birds will eat and they will peck and they will take advantage I said, the bees don't do that. They labor. They make sure they pollinate. 
and make sure that there's a summer fruit for us. Uh, so when Yah harvest, he's going to harvest uh, in the time of his time. And this is the time uh, of Yah's harvest, his first fruit. Yeah. We've laid aside every sin, every wicked thing that so easily besieged us and caused us to be drawn uh, unto a delusion uh, of emotion. We must obey what Yah says. He's harvesting. He's coming for the harvest. And at the sound of the last shofar, when it shall sound, he shall gather all Israel in, and there must be the first fruits. When he gather us, and when he gather us in, we have given all, all of our fruit are ripened, and there shall be enough in the barn that shall last, even if you could measure it in the time that we're in. 100 trillion, trillion, trillion. We cannot even put a numeric. Uh, uh, connotation to that you cannot as one says uh, I have grown much I have much uh, my barn is too small I will tear it down be me another barn uh, and Yah says you are a wicked servant uh, you bring the first fruit unto Yah the first fruit he has brought us between Pesach and now we bring the first fruit of offering, a sheave offering unto Yah. We are ripe. We are ready. You can eat from our heart. You can delight in my bosom, Yah. Can he truly delight in us, sister Yah? Can he truly delight in us? Can he delight in you? Come on, let us be honest. I am ashamed. I am. You may not be. I am ashamed of me. And it's only because he justifies me. It makes me feel even more ashamed. And because I feel ashamed, as they say, the things I did yesterday, I'm not going to do them tomorrow. The things I do tomorrow, I won't do them the next day. You understand? I will not do that, Yisra'ya. We must add this up to the sum of the whole matter and see what the book says, all right? We're going to find out a few things today, all right? We're not going to be long, but I'm going to preach a little while. Is that all right? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Turn quickly to the book of Yeshua, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 17. I want to move here quickly. This time is also represented that, you know, this first fruit is the time that Yahweh brings his people into covenant during the harvest. You know, it's one thing that when you began to harvest, even in your days, you can recall that you elderly ones, at the time of the harvest, it was like a communal thing. Everyone came together and you harvest. Whether you were chopping tobacco, whether you were hoeing cotton, you came together. And even at that time when it was all gathered, it was a time of excitement. Because it, 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 it created that spontaneity and covenant uh, friendship and relationship among each other. You could eat, you cook out, you enjoy the freshness of the garden. Uh, and that is what this Nobi speaks of. He speaks of Yah bringing his people uh, into his covenant, his allegiance, uh, his merit, uh, his allegiance with him uh, in the time of harvest. And that's what uh, Shaud is. That's what Shaud is. We're going to enjoy the peach pie today. Is that so? From the first fruit of the harvest, beautiful peaches. I don't even have to wash mines off. I just eat them right off the tree. They're much more luscious this year than last year. Why? Because uh, when we began to understand the covenant of Yah with that tree, then we can understand what we need to do. And so you got to go back and read again and look at things and see where you went wrong. But what did you do? I went back and I researched and I looked at things and I said, we're going to do it this way this year, period. And you look at the fruits, they're not rotten like they were last year. They're luscious and beautiful, fewer, but they're much more strumptuous. So we got to go back. As old folks say, we got to get back to the old, the way of ancient. And we're not producing fruit, we got to go back. We got to go back to the old year. What he said to us last night, the third year, that has valuable, it has v grave importance. We hear things, but we don't retain them. We don't remember them. We remember folly, but the things of Yah, we don't remember that. Yisrael. Look at what the Nobi says here in Yeshaya, Isaiah chapter 17, verse 4. He talks about a time, he said, in that day... It shall come to pass that the splendor, he is always dealing with Israel. 
As I read to us in Nahum, Yah is going to restore the excellence of Yaakov, and he's going to restore the excellence of Yisrael. That is what this time is for. It shows us our excellence, our majesty, the exaltation of Yah upon our lives, upon his heritage, his people, his covenant elect, that they are his first love. We are the first love of Yah. He loved us. So Yah is so loved. He loved Yisrael. She is the epitome of his bosom. He established her to make known the right of passage. His power that all nations should know that we are the people of Yah, the residue, the remnants, the yetta of Yah. He did that, Yisraya. The prophet speaks, it shall come to pass that the splendor of Yisraya, of Yaakov, shall be made, it shall be made thin. There's a reason why. As I said to us uh, that the branches, uh, the oppressor and Nahum has destroyed the vine branches. Our will to serve Yah has been destroyed. Our sincere motive has been destroyed by this uh, tremendous exhortation of the world. And we've been pressed on every side by the world. You can't allow a tree to become uh, oppressed. You can't oppress the plants. You must water them. You must put the dung. You must put the turkey litter. You must put the boron. You must put the nutrients on that, Yisraya. We must eat the lechem of Yah. We must eat the, the bread of Almighty Yah. And that bread is Yahshua. We must die at the table of Yah. We're not going to bring forth fruit. He said that Yaakov is Dalel. Uh, she is distressed. Yisraya look weakly. We don't look like we are strong people. We don't look strong, we look weakly. We don't look as though we have tenacity, we're tenacious people for Yah. That's why he's going to restore that. That's why Nehum said he's going to restore it. He's going to swoop. He's going to return. He's going to return. He's going to, he's going to return us. He's going to return us that we'll bear forth fruit. And in this hour, this is a time of great excitement. It should be. That's why at those three gatherings, at Pesach, Shaud, and Sukkot, all the men came into Yisraya and they could not come empty. Hallelujah. They came and they gathered in the city of Yerushalayim, in the city of Shalom. He said, all the men you come, all of you are. Of course, they brought their wives and their sons and their daughters uh, to see the excellency and the beauty of Yah as they gathered in the city of Yerushalayim uh, to offer up and to watch a harad offer uh, the sheep offerings unto Yah, the shofar and the silver horn of Yah, the shofar, sound. And the sound ambled over the hills uh, into the plains where those that could not get there, they could hear the sound. It was done supernaturally, Yisraya. It's going to be done that way. It's going to be done. There will be no expression as to how Yah did this. He said he was going to do it. And it's going to be done. Hallelujah. And it shall come to pass that the spirit of Yaakov shall be made thin, Delilah, and the fatness of Yah, uh, of, of, of Yaakov, the, the mashma, the stoutness, the strength, uh, the security, the fatness uh, of his flesh shall wax uh, lean. It shall wax uh, razan. That there is no fatness, there is no beauty about him. I know the world tells you and tell your daughters of Tizayan, you thin as a rail, you're beautiful. That's not beautiful. A woman needs fatness. She needs the beauty of her fatness. And that's what fatness is. Represent the tifra of Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. She needs to be. Now, I'm not saying overweight. I'm saying that there's a fatness with beauty. And that's what the fatness represents. It represents the beauty. A man that is thick, he, he, he may not be classified as a fat man, but there's a beauty to that. Yisraya. He says she has lost her fatness and she has waxed lean, razan, thin. Yah says this, and it shall be as when the harvest man, the harvest man, when he begins to asaf, when he begins to gather of the gathers the corn, and reap the ears with his arm when he began to gather the corn. And he has his arm filled. That's what Yisraya is. We are the offering of Yah. We are the wheat offering of Yah. And every offering was a wheat offering. 
And so when the husband man, when he goes to the field, he sees there are no worms on the corn. He gathers the corn. He puts it in his arm. What an exciting. He knows that they are ripe. They're full of ears. He gets excited about that. The corn represents the stableness of Yisrael. The flour, the lechem, the bread. Your shoes, the bread of life. He represents our stable nature, our strength, our growth, our maturity. The husband man, the harvest man, he gathers the corn, he reaps the ears with his arm. It says this, and it shall be as he that gathers ears in the valley of Rapha. You have to understand what the valley of Rapha was. It was the valley of whereby there were these tremendous men. They were giants. They were tall, massive men. I'm talking about men seven foot five, seven, three, eight feet tall. You were shot at six, five. And I mean massive men and the corn and the, and the fruit that was grown. He said at that time, that's what Yah is looking for harvest today. Like that, Yisra'ya. That we step up as a giant. We step us as one that is strong in the moon and the power and the riches of Yahshua by faith. And then we began to gather in the fruit. As we see the fruit of our lives, we gather them in our arms. That we know we're going to bring an offering of lechem, the fine flower offering unto Yah. Because we have been refined. Our fruit is ripened. And we're going to offer unto Him an offering that is beyond our ability to understand. We're going to stand like a mighty man, like a giant. You see, that's how the offering was. That's the kind of offering we bring on Shaut. That's something that is sparse. This is the time of the gathering of the first fruit. We must have fruit. If the root is corrupt, we have no fruit. Let me dung around the root. No, you don't put it on, you dug around that. You don't put the fruit on, you dug around the root. So the tentacles stretch out and dig deep. We got to get deep into the word of God. We got to dig deep. 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 You don't dig deep, you're not going to get resolved. It's more than just reading. We got to go beyond the shallowness of reading, all right? Hallelujah. We got to go beyond that, Yisraya. He says, yet the olela, the gleaning grape, shall be left in it. Why are you going to leave the grapes, O Maria? Because... Truly, we are, we are truly the Nazarene of Yah, the Nazarites. And we know that that was one thing that the Nazarite, he could not even take the grape or the wines or the grapes or anything like that. So we should not be partaking of anything, Yisrael. That's why we're not, the gleaning of the grapes are going to be left. Even though we have harvest, those that would glean, we will not do that. <clears throat> Although you see the fruit of one's life, you know that they have had a great harvest. We will not go and glean from them, as Zakin said to us. Uh, we are so full of pride and so wicked. Uh, we are so dishonest. Uh, he said, even the gleaning of the grapes are going to be left. You tell me grapes that are that big, uh, I want to try one of them. I heard someone that lives in the land of Yisrael. You'll be surprised uh, the amount of people of the diasporas from this nation that has moved to Yisrael. And I heard this man one day. I was listening to him. He was talking about the fruit in that land. He said, I'm telling you all. He said, when I moved here 20 years ago, I had no concept what a grape was. I thought what I was eating in America was a grape. He said, when you come to this land here, he says, a grape, they look like lemons. They are huge. And you're talking about that is so delicious and sweet. I don't care whether it's grapes, apples, any kind of fruit, dates. He said, I'm telling you, you'll never taste a fruit. And when Yah tastes the fruit of the first fruit, he wants to make sure that it is ripe. He wants to make sure that he has faith, he delights in it. 
He will know what he will be gathering in the end gathering. He will prepare the sound of the shofar. So when the last shofar sound, he's going to gather us all into the promises of the covenant with Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. And that shall be fruit to last throughout the times of Yah. You can't go into the kingdom if they hand it. We must have fruit. We must, Yisraya. Must be fruit. Is he coming for an abundance of fruit? Sure he is. So he comes at this time. We think that that's just the end. This is what this time represents. He comes at this time to, and he walks. Are we two or three? We have a few here this morning. Do we have anyone listening on the live stream? Hallelujah. But two or three are gathered in his name. Shall he there also be in the midst? So we have those that have gathered with us. Hallelujah. So he has come to sample the fruit. And if it's not the ripened fruit, if it's corrupt fruit, I will show you what he's going to do. He's going to gather the first fruit of all things, Yisraya. I'm going to finish this. Hallelujah. Yet gleaning grapes shall be left in, and the shaking of an olive tree, two or three berries. He talked about the three years, didn't he not? You can see the growth and the fruition in the third year. We saw that. Uh, one of the first things we did when we came here, we, when we first moved here, a few of us here, we plowed garden one there. It had never been plowed. It was a hay field. We did not have time to work the garden. We were busy here laboring. And so Oxymion and I, we planted some beans, some of everything, cantaloupes. And I tell you, that virgin soil, we did not put a thing on it. Not one thing. It produced such an overbearing abundance of cantaloupe, just everything. And so the next year we thought we could expect that it wasn't that way. And the next year it get even more limited. That's why Yah commands us every seven years we rest the land. That's why we rest the land. We have always received an abundance after the seventh year. Because we were not adding the nutrients. We should add faith. Faith to our faith. We should add, add to our faith, Yisraya. We should add to our confidence in our imuna and yah. So we come this time as a ach, as Zakain spoke to us. And next year we come with a greater offering, with a with a more full of basket of fruit to offer unto Yah. We'll come that way with an abundance, just like Cain and Abel. He had respect. Unto the offering of Abel. But Cain, he did not have respect unto his offering. He didn't like him. He says, uh, and the branches, listen, he says, uh, uh, two or three berries in the top of the uttermost uh, bar, four or five in the, utterm uh, in the uttermost fruitful, they are the para, the fruitful branches thereof. Uh, we should be fruitful branches. Uh, we are in the outermost. We have been scattered throughout the nations of the earth. We are not in Yerushalayim. We are in the outermost. There in Yerushalayim, the three represents the power of Yah's riches and the power of his witness of Yahshua, the power of his might, the power of the Ruach HaKodesh. So we're in the outermost, Yisraeliah. We're not in the land of Yerushalayim. We're not there. And even though we are in the outmost, uh, the outmost branches, uh, we should therefore be fruitful, says Yah, the sovereign master of Yisraya. Although we are outwardly and from the land, uh, we should bring forth fruit. These lying damnable devils talking about you don't keep the more dim. This little coward of an individual, I've written to him twice. Uh, he asked for those to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to write uh, a dissertation to his, uh, to his article. I've done it, contacted him twice, uh, and the coward has not even wrote me back. I'm talking about that Obadiah of then our age, all right? Hope someone hears me and tell him I said that. The cowards. It says in verse 7, at that day shall... And Adam, a man, looked to his maker 
See, this is the day we look to our maker. And we ask, what have I done wrong? He will look to his maker. And his eyes shall have our respect to the Chadosh one of Yisrael. We should look to Yah today and see the branches are teeming. And although they're weighted down, we're not broken, we're not cast down, not at all. Yeah. And then when we see the abundance of that, we have left so many grapes, we have so much in our fruitful lives that uh, we have left so much for the masses to glean on. You don't know how to love. I have such an abundance. It is so enriched. Then you can just glean from, from this tree to understand the beauty of love. And then in that day, as he speaks of the time of his covenant restoration with Yisrael, and every day he restores us unto uh, uh, in the fulfillment of his covenant with us. And then we take a day like this and we look to our make and say, Oh my, what am I that yet I should bear such an abundance of fruit that you brought? Me above all men. Come on, Yisrael. We have so much that we leave that for those to glean. And there's so much that we have that they're gleaning from so much. Uh, we think that no one is gleaning from us yet because there's such a, a tremendous amount left for the gleaners to glean. Uh, they're gleaning from every tree. They should be able to glean from our lives uh, and to glean from our perspectives, to glean from our heart, to pick that and eat it and die on it. And they grow, even though they're ignorant, don't even know ya. They should be. And that's the truth. Hallelujah. And that is the truth. He's going to harvest in the time whereby the fruit are ripen. He's not going to harvest before that time. And that's why he gives us time to plow, to sow, and to dung, to fertilize. But we've been putting the dung on the grounds here. Isn't that amazing that we spent the other day, Yosipi Yah brought an offering of $200. We took that $200 and bought, purchase, we purchased turkey doo-doo. Well, why did you purchase turkey doo-doo? Because... Uh, as he said to us last night, let me dung. Let me dung. So if it takes dung to bring fruit out of Yisraya, then I want to put some dung uh, around the blueberries and the blackberries. Uh, put some dung on the cucumbers. Uh, put some dung uh, on the okra and the tomatoes. Don't you? I think it will work. Yeah. Hallelujah. So we use that to buy some dung. It was a time that they would beg you to take it. Now you got to buy it. We tried to, I had Simeon to check there in the city of Charlotte, the waste plants. They take that human waste and I wanted to get as much as we could, take it across the street over here and just put it on those grounds so that the grass will grow to bring the deer in that we can go, yes, we hunt deer here. And we eat deer here. The matter of fact, we eat meat here. How about that? And so the ark can go out and sit there all day and just go boom, 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 boom. And bring the deer harvest in. And yet it was a time that uh, they could not give it away. And now everyone is clamoring, the farmers, they're taking it all. Whereby someone small like us, we can't get even 10 truckloads. Can't even get it. Because of its rich value and the value of it and what it produced. No, I don't want to put my dung on the plants here. I'd rather put the turkey dung, even though human dung is of a greater value and more nutrients and has a greater nitrogen content than any cow dung, any, any hog dung, any chicken dung, or any kind of turkey dung. It's better. Fact. It is much better. Hallelujah. Yeah. We have a problem with that, don't we? And yet we have no problem with the turkey boo-boo. Or the cow boo-boo. We're silly people. Hallelujah. We're silly people. Well, that, well, it's not going to look like that. It's not going to smell like that when it's, 
when it's refined. All right? It's not going to be like that. You go across the road over there, you don't want to smell that like turkey dung. I said to Simeon, no, take it all the way back. Because I don't like smelling that. It is raunchy. It stinks. And the closer it is, the more flies. No, come back here. I'll show you. Where? Come on, come on. Way back there. Way on. No, 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 not right here no more. Way back there. Hallelujah. And that's the truth. He's going to gather his people. This day is the gathering of his people. Shaul writes on the Thessalonica for their strength and their encouragement. Turn quickly, 2 Thessalonica, yeah. chapter 2, verse 1. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, No, we press, we urge you, my Israelites, ach, my brothers. He said, We urge you by the coming of Yeshua HaMashiach and by our gathering together unto him. We have been gathered together. We have been a here today unto Yahshua. Was he not full of the abundance of the peri, the fruit of Yah? I know that this speaks of the end time or the gathering of Yisrael. That is what this is all about. That is what Shaul is about. The first fruit of the pouring out of the Ruach. As Azar came brought out unto us uh, the first fruit of Yah. The fruit of Ahava. Imuna. Patience. Uh, and gentleness. And kindness. Uh, and the Hasset. Uh, these are the fruit of Yah. Let us not be so soon, soon shaken, he says. I urge you for the coming of Yahshua HaMashiach and the gathering of his people. So he gives us reminders. That's why we guard carefully the time of your seasons. I work on that all year long. I just don't start on that at the beginning. From this day, I work to the next one. And as soon as the last feast day, the Mo'adim is over, I began as I calculate all the time. I have three different, three or four different devices in my office that shows me I have moon calendar or solar calendar phases. I have clocks and all. I even have a solar, I even have a moon phase clock that it literally shows you the new moon every quarter of the moon. And it moves that way. I have that. And then I go out here and I look for the moon. This is vital. It's vital to understand these things. And we must know that we cannot be slack. If we, we are slack, we come to poverty. That's why we're not excited about your poor man can't get up. We, that's why he said, Israel should be dalal. They should be thin and no strength, no, no, no fatness on us. We need fatness. I like a fat peach. I don't like the little small harvest. Sometimes the little runts are the sweetest ones, are they not? But I like the fat peach. I want the big one. I went out there one day and I'm looking. I said, that's the one. How did you get it? That's all right. I'm getting that one. Walked down a little bit. When I bit it in that, oh, this is just right. Sweet, succulent. I went down a little further. That's another one there. And so I have a handful of peaches. Juice running everywhere. But I'm certainly enjoying myself on the first fruit. Hallelujah. And that's the way it is with Yah. He enjoys the first fruits. He does. He wants the first fruit because the first is the best. It is the best of the grapes. The first press is the best of the olive tree. We represent that. It is the best. The first press of the olives. The first oil is the best. The first is always the best. It is represented uh, in the progeneration of the family. It is the firstborn uh, whereby the heritage uh, is uh, in alignment with. It is the firstborn. Your shoe is the first begotten uh, of the Abba. Uh, we are the first uh, begotten of your shoe uh, unto Almighty Yah. Yeah. We must understand that Yisrael Yah. He has always dealt with us in the first fruit manner. And he grants unto us today, this day. We may bring the old figure of the sheaves into Almighty Yah. To say, look at my harvest. Look what has been sold in my life. Look at how excited I am about you, Yah. We should not be dead, Yisrael Yah. Hallelujah. 
Jehovah says again, now we urge you, Israelites, uh, Israelites, uh, ach, brothers, by the coming of our master Yeshua HaMashiach, and by the gathering together unto him, that you be not so soon shaken in mind or trouble, neither by ruach nor by word or by letter from us, that the day of Messiah Yeshua is at hand. He has always, Yah is going to inspect his fruit. And once the inspection is done, he will have the day of the sounding of the shofar. And then once that is finished, he's going to say, I want you to rest from all the labor of the world. I don't want you to labor. That's why, that's why the Day of Atonement is a day that he said, if you do, that's the only feast that he said, if you do anything outside that, I would kill you. That's what he says. Yes, says that. Of all the feast days. Not of this one, not of Pesach, but that one, he said, I would kill you. He said, I would kill you. He means what he says. I know we don't. How is it that we take some things as to be true and some things we don't believe? We've been taught by dirty whore to make us think that way. Yeah. He said, I will kill you. And then he will say, after that, after we have abstained from the affairs of the world, we have fasted for his day. A day as with Yah is like a thousand years. One day with Yah is like a, a thousand years. And a thousand years is like one day with Yah. So time, what are you saying? Time has no relevance unto Yah. And so he says, I want you to fast this day. And then I want you to prepare your booths for Sukkah. And that you will enter into the booth just for the temporary time. And I shall bring you all into the gathering. Yeshua said, I go and prepare a place. If I go not, I cannot go and prepare the place for you. And to make sure that the Sukkot is ready for you to enter in. The Sukkot. That we dwell in the presence of Yah for eternity. Oh, I know it may sound some mystical. That's all right. But it's a reality. It's a reality. And the only way we're going to get that, we must bring fruit. You know, even in, in the most urgent, rigid pagan worship, one of the things that they bring is the fruit offering. All of them. Look at all the gods. You look at the Hindus and all that. They always bring in the fruit offering. Apples and pretty berries and as Azakain said, in baskets that look so beautiful. They're always doing that. I have a book on the religions of the world, the religions of the world. It cost me, the man wanted $2 for it. I got it for a dollar at the flea market. It gives you insight on all the religions of the world. And you will see they all bring offerings. He wants us to offer unto him the sacrifice of Torah, of praises for all that he has done. Just like I read that. And Yeshaya said that we will, we will have respect unto our Chadosh one, that the maker, our eyes, our eyes, our ayin, shall have respect unto Yah. Yahshua yeah. is coming for the first fruit. He's coming to gather the fruit. He's coming in the summertime to gather the first fruit. He's going to inspect. He's going to taste and see. Oh, taste. Taste Yah. And see how tough and how sweet he is, all right? He's coming to taste. And you know when you taste something and if it's not fitting for your palate, you pah, he's coming to taste. And so that's what this season is for, for him to taste us. Yeah. Ain't right. Yeah. But he's like, no, no, yeah. I don't like that taste. Yeah. I will, my friend, yeah. you get it plain yeah. and uncut. Yeah. Truth, all right? Hallelujah, hallelujah. I, I want to read this quickly, uh, Yisrael. And I want to move on. Turn quickly to the book of Genesis. Bereshit. Hallelujah. The importance of the first fruit. It says, after the death of Abraham, that Yah, it says he blessed, or he berach. He bowed down to his son, Yitzchak, Yitzchak. He bowed down to him. He bowed down, or he berach his son, Yitzchak, Yitzchak. His, does it say his first fruit? Was he the first fruit of Abraham? It says, and Yah bowed down to his first fruit. Is Yahshua the first fruit of Almighty Yah? Is he the first fruit of the power of the Torah? Are we the first fruit of Yahshua? Sure we are. And if he bowed down to the first fruit of Abraham, he's going to bow down to the first fruit of Yahshua, Hamashiach. 
And Yitzhak Yitzhak dwell by the well Bir Lacha Ru'a. Bir Lacha Ru'a, which is in plan Bir Lacha Lura, is the well of life or the living life. Do we not abide by the well, Yeshua? Is he not the living well of Yah? And that's where he abides. See, the first fruit always abide by the living well. Always. You cannot water the plants out here. Now, what do you think they have E. coli? Because the watering is bad. It's polluted. It's tainted. You got to have fresh water. Living water. It must have the bacteria. It must have... Uh, the necessary bacteria uh, uh, and the nitrogen and oxygen there to get life onto the plant. You cannot live without oxygen. You cannot live without hydrogen. H2O, you cannot live without it. So there's life. Hallelujah. Just like life in the blood, it's life in the dam of Yeshua, Hamashiach. That's what the great rubbers at the blood, the dam, the life of the blood. It's life in that succulent juice from those peaches or the muscadines or the scuffernogs or the berries on the tree. What are those berries out here, uh, 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 Simeon, out here on the tree? What is that tree? What is that berry tree out here, uh, uh, Simeon? What is that? The mulberry. We have a mulberry tree out here, and I've never seen it produced like this. We just haven't picked them because we have so much to do. But the mulberries, one day we sat there, Simeon and I, picking those and eating those, and they were sweet and delicious. It's right here, in the curve right here. Beautiful tree. I tell you what, when we put the goats there, they will climb the tree and get them. They, they, the branches are leaning. They will get the mulberries, all right. Hallelujah. I've never seen the grapes, the wild muscadimes grow like that. I went across the street, the blackberries, my, I was over there uh, filling my mouth for some other day. Right behind the sign, uh, Victory 2 or Teshua 2. And abundance of blackberries. The only thing I do is go pick them. Go pick them. Hallelujah. That would be nice. Go pick some berries and we have a blackberry pie. How about that? You see, we don't like that kind of work too. I want to share what the scripture says. That's why, see, we don't like that kind of work is because we don't live in our lives like that. It is the truth. He gave that to show us it is a perspective of our own lives. And because we don't like to toil like that, and the world has made us lazy and shiftless as hell. We like the air condition. We can't stand a little heat. We don't like that. We can't stand a little bug buzzing around or a gnat. We can't handle that today. Can't handle that. Give me a building that's air conditioned where I can uh, sit back and Sip. Now, I'd rather be out in the sun. It has life and health. It has vitamin E and it makes your body strong. I don't want to sit out. I don't want, I, I don't, I've never liked working in a building. I have never. I've never. I remember as a young man that uh, I was in College Central Piedmont uh, and then uh, I, I, uh, Duke Energy wanted to hire me then, uh, but they wanted to send me to Atlanta. They wanted some people of quote, uh, what they call colored or what they call black or African Americans. They wanted to try to fill a little quota because they were not hiring people and they pursued me. But I like working outside. I had an outdoor job and I like being outside. I didn't want that clustering to be clustered inside of a building. I did not. And so then they pursued me again. I said, no. And then my insurance says to me one day, well, you know, the monies are kind of tight. I said, well, okay. And I applied for a job at IBM, and they hired me. I applied for that job. But I never liked working inside. Working outside makes you strong. It makes your bones strong. It makes you strong. You feel healthy. I know I do. I'm going to work outside. I'm going to hit the sun. I want my body to be enriched. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to work hard. And it's one thing I do. I put the living water. I always put H2O in me. I drink water all the time. I really don't want the Gatorade. Just give me some water. Hallelujah. That's right. Quickly, he says, after death, and this is what happened. He blessed or Yah bowed down to the first fruit. He barak. 
is first fruit. He will bless our first fruit uh, if there's a sincere motive or if we have tended to, to the garden. If we have tended to our lives, Yisrael, if we have nurtured ourselves, we have pruned and cut back and cut ourselves according uh, to the instructions of the Torah. He will bless our first fruit. He will bless our first fruit. But we must be in compliance as to what he commands us, Yisrael. We are the first fruit uh, of Yeshua HaMashiach. And we must, we must, Yisrael, we must bring forth an abundance. And the reason we cannot harvest much, it is one thing that, uh, that the harvest will represent when you go to harvest. It is one sure thing you will know. You will tell how much labor has been put in the harvest uh, as to what you harvest. If you have not labored, you're not going to get a damn thing. The Katu is expressive on that in the book of Shemoth, Exodus chapter 23, verse 16. I want to read, deal with a little bit of our laboring here. It says in Exodus 23, 16. It says, and hug or the feast of Shouts, Pentecost, the time of harvest, gets here. That's what it is. It says the before of the first fruit. This shows us, this time shows us. Uh, it says the first fruit of your labors. Shemoth 2316. This season shows us uh, in our first fruit what kind of labor we are put into and uh, to the will of Yah. This is what this shows us. And the first fruit of your labors uh, which you have sown, you have zarah, you have scattered the seeds uh, in the field. Uh, you have done that. So this is the time that shows us the first fruit of our labor. And understanding the first fruit of our labor, we will understand the ingathering as he goes on to say, and the hog of ingathering, Sukkoth, which is the end of the year, when you have gathered, when you have asav, we have gathered in your labor out of the field. So we gather in our labor. Our labor shows us our fruits. You labor to be wicked, then the fruit will be wicked. If you labor to hone yourself according uh, to the Torah of Yah and to dismantle the will uh, that opposes Yah in the time of ingathering, uh, then your labor will be revealed uh, in your ingathering. Yeah. It will be seen. If you've been slothful, a little folding a hand, the weeds grow, the weeds overtake your field, and you go out there and you try to weed out, you get discouraged, you become oppressed, you become oppressed, you say, I just throw the hoe down and forget that you left the hoe in the field. That's what we do. We throw the mantle down. We throw down Yahshua. We don't want him because he eradicates every corrupt thing that's in us, Yisraeli. It is our own labor, our own labor that we have labored since the sowing of the seed until the first fruit that will show us what shall be the end or the end gathering. We gather until the end gathering, and when we finish the gathering, or we bring everything into the barns, uh, then we will say, my, there's more than enough. Yeah. I was saying to Ach Simeon, as far as some of the things I've planted, we have planted, I don't know. My, we got so much in the garden, Yosef and I, yes, on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on, um, Yam Hashishi, we planted on Friday, we planted uh, about 750 of those select crimson watermelons. And they, what are we going to do with all those? Give them away and eat some and maybe sell some. Hallelujah. I don't mind giving them away. Not me. Hallelujah. But I want to make sure that we're not wasting water when we're pumping water from here to there. Put a seed down there. And let it grow. Hundreds of above ground sweet potatoes uh, and pumpkins uh, and sweet potatoes. Last Yom Rishon, we put out 750, 800 broccoli. Now you go out there and try bending your back on that for a day, all right? How about that? Try doing that. I became wise. I ordered this book that this old farmer says I'm getting old, so when it comes to planting seeds, uh, I have a two-inch pipe, and Akshimri and I, we planted nearly 800 uh, okra seeds. Didn't have to bend our back at all. 
You drop the pipe, you set the pipe down, you drop the seat down, cover and go. You don't even have to bend your back. You haven't planted 700 okra seeds or 1,000 and you're bending down all day. You will feel and sense the agony of that. As we were cutting uh, the okra suckers the other morning, uh, Zakim Bermin and Yosef and I, I said, yeah, we got to find a better way than this. And I came up with something. I got something that will work on next year. There's a lot of plants you going down that road. It will make you look to the end. You still got a long way to go. So it is in the spiritual world. We got a long way to go. We have not come to the end yet, all right? We got a long way to go, Yisraya. We have a very, very long way to go. So it's in the bearing of our first fruit, it is what we put in. You don't put a damn thing in, you're not going to get a damn thing. You don't put the labor in, you're not going to reap anything at all. You plant a beautiful flower bed, you don't weed it, then the, the weeds are going to overtake the flowers. You got to take the necessary preparations. You got to add mulch. You got to do this. I don't want our beds out here, although they have nothing in there, grass to grow and to, to extract the nutrients from that. I don't want that. If it take all day, we pull weeds out of that, we pull weeds. And you that love the labor of Yahweh, you have nothing to pull weeds. I don't care with you. An ark on a halt. Will help your back, make you strong, your body strong. Get out in the sun a little bit. It will help you. At times I purchase things from a man here. There's a farmer. His name is Billy Jordan. He says to me, David... I've had one job in all of my life. I worked a job for three hours and I walked off. I've, this is all I've done all my life is farm. He grows some of the most beautiful onions and things like that. He knows what he is doing. I will not farm his way. But the man knows what he is doing when it comes to farming, how to garden, how to take care of things. He has a sister that is 85 years old. Do you all hear me? When I go there, I talk to her in a way, so how are you doing? She said, oh, David, I'm doing, I'm doing fine. I said, how are you feeling? You're getting around well? Yes, sir, I'm getting around well. I said, well, I came to bring Billy's money. Well, I need to keep this money. That's the way she talks. And so I will always, when I take someone there, I will ask her a question because I know how she's going to answer it. She said, oh, I worked until I was 80 years old. She said, I just stopped going out to the garden and farming and helping Billy because I couldn't walk. She's 85 years old. She's got a little limp, but the woman is 85 years old. And she said, That's all. she has never had a job. That's all she's done. Work and cook biscuits for him. And they are brothers and sisters. He's 70 years old, and they live together all of their lives. Neither one of them ever been married. To neither. And she worked the garden, oh yeah, that man, 70 years old, he works the garden, he harvests, uh, he does all of that. I think I want to take that, that prescription. If she lived to be 85 and she's still walking, I think I'd rather go that way. You understand? You all don't hear that. You don't want to hear that. You lazy ones don't want to hear that. You don't want to work like that. I was trying to tell a group of people that's trying that purchase some land they want to farm. I said to the man, I said, it's hard work for me. Oh, it's not hard. Whoo, all right then. I said, we don't farm here. We garden and it's tough. Oh, no, it's not that tough. Whoa. And what he was growing, he was growing about 100 different items. Whoa. I said, boy, you're going to have some trouble. No, 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 no. I said, I tell you what, I didn't say this to him. When it comes time to harvest that in that Georgia hot sun, and you New, New Yorkers and Philadelphians and Californians are not used to gnats buzzing around your ears and going in your ears, as Granny would say, you will find out. You will find out how many are willing to labor and willing to work. When you say 90 degree weather, let's go home, uh, you're not going to find too many volunteers. I said, what an ignorant man. He thinks he knows, but he doesn't know a damn thing. You tell me you can't hear from a man that has done this for quite extensively for some years. I've learned. You can't have that many different things. When it comes time, you got 2,000 broccoli plants. It would take you all day, two people all day to harvest that. It would take you all day. 
Sure would. It would take you all day. Unless you got some of that cheap Mexican labor and they go out and harvest for you. You understand? No, you, you have no machine to harvest broccoli. You ride along and you cut and you cut and you cut. Hallelujah. I want to move on. I want to close this soon, all right? It's our labor, Yisrael. Look at what Dawid says here in Tehillim 128 verse 2. This is the time of the year that we should enjoy the labor of our, of our ruach, what we have labored for, what we have strived to accomplish in Yahshua. He says this in Tehillim 128 verse 2. Yah says, for you shall eat the labor, the toil, the labor of your hands. Happy as shall, shall you be, and it shall be well with you. We're in the time in this Sha'utz, in the Bichor, the fruit gathering, the first fruit. We shall eat the labor of our hand. We shall enjoy this day. We shall enjoy the labor. We should enjoy the labor of our ruach, what has been labored intensely in our bosom and what has come to pass. We shall enjoy that. We shall eat the labor of our hands, Yisraya. And when we do that, when you eat the labor of your hand, then you're happy. There is nothing more exciting. I said to my Ishaw, as we were picking on, the, on last week uh, on the Yom HaShishi, Yosef and I, I said, I want everything that they cook from the garden for this day, for this meal. And the only thing I did not get was some greens and some turnips. I should have gotten that, but I knew I needed to plant garden one. Now, we can't have uh, the, the Alaskan smoke, the Alaskan salmon. That's all right. It's wild salmon. That's all right. But I want the stuff that we grow here. We go out. I will not let her buy that. I said, no, you're not going to buy that. We eat what we got. I was saying to them, I'll go safe. It's one thing about people in other countries. Uh, as we cut the suckers off the tomatoes, they have countries that eat the suckers. They eat, the, they, they eat, the, they eat everything. You don't throw away, you don't throw away the, the squash leaves. Uh, they eat them. They eat everything. The countries that like the UK, they don't have much. They don't have space to grow anything. That's why these damn dirty bastard slips are robbing the continent of Africa. They're buying up the land and saying they're doing that to create jobs. They're damn liars. They're buying it to bring the people in poverty. These universities like Harvard it, Harvard it, and Vanderbilt, they buying up the hectare acres of the land for a hundred years or so. You think they're doing that to feed the people? Hell no. They're doing that to make money. Goldman and Sutt and the powerful rich institutions. They're going to make the people that even more poor. That's what they're going to do. They're dirty liars. They're dirty bastard slips. I don't take that back. Hallelujah. 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 We shall eat the labor of our hand. That's why. When one truly labors, it shows that they're tending to life. We labor in the Ru'at, we're tending to the life of Yahshua in us. Are we not the witness of his Torah, the life of Torah in us? We labor in the gardens, we're tending to that life because it is that which sustain our lives, isn't it not? Shalomo says here in Proverbs 10, 16, he says that the labor of the Sadiq is high, it is life. It is life. And the fruit, the fruit, the tabu'ah, the, tabu the, tabu the fruit of the wicked is sin. That's what the wicked produce, sin. But the fruit of the labor, of the labor, of the sadiq, it produced life. And so we labor in sadiq to produce the life or the witness of Yahshua, the living power of Yahshua in our bosom, Yisraya. If we don't do that, then we are laboring. Our fruit is sin. We bring forth sin. We don't bring forth the life of Yah. That's why he's coming for the first fruit, whether you're wicked or saved. He is going to have the first fruit. Can I read this for us? That's why when I talk about garden, we don't like to hear that. Your daughters, you Baptists, Zion, you don't like that at all. It says this in Shirak 7.15. It says, do not hate toilsome labor. Do not hate 
the tremendous labor. Do not hate toilsome labor, nor the hu husbandry. Do not hate the hub husbandry and farm work. And farm work. Don't hate to labor. Don't hate to sweat. I don't ever want to be in a position where I can't sweat and keep my body sweating. I, I like that. I do. Now, you may not like it. But I get out in the garden, I, I mean, I sweat. I want to sweat. So don't hate that. He said, do not hate toilsome labor, nor husbandry, or farm work, which were created by the Most High. Y'all created that. He created us to be an agrarian people. He did not create us to be sitting in the office and, and sit behind some crazy computer, having my skin itch my body. He didn't create that. He didn't create us even as a people, as a nation of people, to live in a community whereby everything was central. I said to Ak Simeon yesterday in the dining hall, I said, if I was the ruler of a nation, I said I would create cities in, in, my, in my nation that would be so unique. I, I, know, I know how to do it. I said, I will have everything centered for one central location, and every street leads into that. Not like these crazy streets here. For this, if I have a municipality here within a 50-mile range, that's where they all come here. Everything is here. And transit, no, everyone will not have a car. We will, I say everywhere I would have a, a lane for vehicle, I have a bicycle lanes and everything. I would have massive transportation. Everything would be free. And it would be the taxing or the utilizing of the people. And everything would be fair. Everything that you need here, we will have agriculture. We will have growth. We will have communities of farms whereby that there will be thousands that, that farm. But we would all be rich. People don't understand what richness is. They will be healthy. There will be no sicknesses and diseases. We will grow old and healthy. Our bodies are broken today. Young man, I was talking to a young man the other day. Uh, and I looked at him. I said, how old are you? He said, I'm 46. I said, I'm 56 years old. I said, I will work as hard as any young man. He said, they got me on six medications for one thing. I said, man. He said, I can't eat broccoli. I can't eat color. I said, something is wrong, man. I said, I want our cows eat. And everything they eat is green. And they're healthy. And they pass. They're done. Something is wrong, man. And them doctors, come on, man. So I said to him, I said, if you do nothing else, go to Hallelujah. I said, have you ever heard of Hallelujah Acres? He said, yeah, he's right down the street from my house. I said, just go visit. I said, you're spending all this money on drugs. And the doctor goes, he's 46 years old. They tell him he cannot eat broccoli. He cannot eat greens. He can't eat anything green. 46. And he's telling me all these diseases. He got high, low pressure, this and that. I said, man, it's what you, come on, man. I said, go to Hallelujah Acres. Just go there. Spend the money and go there. And just see. If nothing else, man. Come on, that's crazy. You can't eat greens. He said, because it has too much vitamin K and I'm on this blood thinner. He said, and I can't do nothing. I can't walk. I can't exercise. I said, come on. Y'all created toilsome labor for us that we won't get overweight. We won't, we won't be bloated. We won't get out of shape. That's what he did. We can sweat. We can burn calories. And what the world has created is something whereby we, we're not even fruitful. Yes, he created that. Y'all did. He did that. You tell me 46 years old? When I was 46 years old, I was a monster. That's the truth. I was strong as a bull. I was... And strong at 46 and I was when I was 26 or 36. And this man, young man, can hardly walk. You know something is wrong. Come on. That's not how y'all created us. That's not how y'all intended his people. He meant for us to have some toilsome labor because in that kind of labor you can think. When I'm in the garden working, I think. My mind is on y'all. You can think. You can think. Your mind is clear. My mind is clear. When the sweat pours out of your eyes and Get all down in your face and all. I can think. I can think. My mind becomes clear. I can hear the sounds. I can look up. I'd rather be there. I have no problem. None whatsoever. I brought you that he, he, he has granted that where I can labor that way. I'm glad that I can labor this way. I'm glad. I said to the ark on Yom HaShishi, I said, we're going to stop about 12-1. About 1. What did I say? About 1? 
Well, I know the Zakain, but I mean, he worked, he had to finish his course, and he was just going to do that. And I watched this old man, because I went to the other office over there a little while, and I watched this old man, I watched him over there as he tend to the wheat grass. As a matter of fact, he had on a military jacket. I said, I, I know it's hot, and I, I know that you need to cover your body, but this old man had on a military jacket. And he did not miss a beat. And I'm watching this man work and labor and work and labor. Sun not even affecting him at all. Some of us go out there, we just go, whoo. Come on, I don't want to be that way. I want to hit that. Yes, uh, I like it because it adds something to your body that nothing else can. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So you don't hate the toil of some labor. And the harvest, we got to labor hard to eradicate what's in our bosom that is offensive unto Yah. I want to close it with a few verses. I want you to, to understand what this is all about, what Zachin Ramaya, as he said to us concerning the baskets and the fruit of Yah. It's all about coming to the spiritual table to dine and to eat from. We must eat from the spiritual things. Yahshua gives us an example as I will piggyback on some of what he said last night. It says in the book of Yachahan, John 6, 26. Yahshua answered and said, and said, he answered them and said, Truly, truly, I say to you, you seek me, not because you saw the miracles. He said, you don't, you don't inquire of Yah because uh, he has done something mighty in your life. Not because you saw the Mappe, the miracles, uh, but because you did eat the loaves of bread. You ate the bread and you were filled. He says, although you seek me, not because uh, you love me, uh, and because you want this religious fascination, uh, he tells them, he said, labor not. See, we can eat the fruit of our labor, right? Uh, he says, labor not for the meat which perishes. You don't labor for that. You don't work for those things uh, that have no substance. Uh, he said, but for the meat which endures to everlasting life, uh, that brings the olam, uh, the olam viat, the life, uh, the everlasting high Allah, the everlasting life, uh, which the Son of Man shall give to you, uh, for him has Yah the Abba seal. Uh, that is what we must eat, the spiritual food. Uh, and when we eat the spiritual food, we have an abundance of fruit uh, at this time, Israel. Yeah, because we have labor, we have opposed the wicked one and fought against the one. We have resisted the word of hell because we have submitted ourselves unto the Torah of Yah, and we have the power to resist, and then he flees. We must submit to that first. We must submit unto the Torah of the Word of Yah in order to resist the enemy. And once we submit, we resist, we tend to the life of the witness of Yahshua, and then we begin to bring forth the abundance of fruit. We can see our labor. We have defended the witness of Yah. We have defended our hearts, our minds from the encroachment of hell. Why? Because we were submitted unto the Torah. And once we do that, we began to see the cultivation and the growth of the fruit of Yah. The wicked do that. And they have their first fruit. And Yah is going to take their first fruit as well. He wants their first fruit too. Quickly here in the book of Dibarim, Deuteronomy. Hallelujah. We need to reign. That's why I don't pray for the rain, but last night, I think I went to bed around 1.30, 2. I know it was late because when I left here yesterday, I went home and I laid down and I went out like a light. And I slept for two hours. I can't do that because I can't sleep at night. I slept for two hours. But I was up studying. I was up studying and looking at things until at that time. Of course, when you begin to do that, the enemy, he knows how to, the old flesh knows how to get their eyes weary. So it was about 1.30 when I finished. I was looking at cat face, just looking at things, studying, and sitting there. We know that the first fruit of the Ru'ah, it was poured out on Sha'u. We know that on Pentecost. We know that. The pouring out of the Ru'ah. And Yah says unto us in the book of Dibarim, chapter 11, verse 13, He says this. He said, and it shall come to pass... If you shall shemach, if we shall listen diligently with all of our hearts and, and give ourselves to Yah. He said, if you shall listen, Dibarim 11, 13, and it shall come to pass if you shall shemach diligently to my mitzvah. We must 
Hear the mitzvah, the instructions of Yah. He said, which I command you this day uh, to love Yah, your Abba, and to serve him with all call your love and with all of your nefesh. Uh, this is what we must do, Yisrael Yah. That's why Pesach, it was a time of examination to make sure that there's a genuine love in our hearts uh, for Yah. That's why we examine ourselves during that time to make sure there's no hamets there. No love it. Yah said, if you do that, he said, then... I will give you the mata. I will give you uh, the rain. We need the rain. The fruit trees need the rain. We need the rain. He said, I will give you the mata. I will give you the rain of your land in his due season. You can sow, but without the rain, there is no harvest. And we don't have the rain of the ruach hachodash upon us. There should be no harvest. Yah said, but if you love me, you keep my commandments. Uh, he said, I will send you the rain uh, in the due season, in the time uh, that the harvest may be ready in due season. Uh, he says, the first, the first rain. Uh, and then he said, I will send the latter rain. Uh, we're waiting on the latter rain of Yah to come. Uh, we'll see the first rain of the Ruach uh, on the first uh, Sha'uvat, on the first fruit of Yahshua HaMashiach. And the abundance of his power that they had the fruit of the Ruach, uh, that they sold, they abandoned their life, they sold all, they had all things in common. Uh, and now we're waiting for the latter rain. That's why we must continue the plant. We may have a drought this year, but you continue the plant. Ezekiel Yeremiah, Yisrael said to us, uh, we, even though you have, we have failed, we have faltered, uh, that even this year we cannot see the splendor or the excellence of our fruit. Then next year we have learned from this year. So you learn every year in garden. Uh, you learn how to alter things, to change, uh, and to change seeds and to hear, and to be more tentative and to understand the weather. And so you plant things that will produce abundantly. And you do it conscientiously. That's why we must hear you. If we don't hear him, we can't do things conscientiously. And then we will wait for the latter rain. For what? That you may gather, you may asaf in your corn and your wine and your oil. The five foolish did not have the oil, did they? They didn't have the corn because they had not gathered. But the, but, but the wise one... The ten foolish, they did not have, uh, what was it, ten or five? Five, all right, I had it right. Huh? But the five foolish and the five wise, yes, represent the ten tribes of, of, of the northern tribes of Yisrael. I understand what it means, all right. Hallelujah. They did not have the oil. So we must labor to make sure that our vessels are full of the first press of the oil. That is vital, the first press. That's the purest, the cold press. You buy certain oil, they tell you cold press, first press, you're going to spend more. The second press, the first press, you may spend, uh, you may spend $50 for a certain kind of oil. Second press, you may spend 30 And they press it again, you may get it for $5. You, all the essence of that oil is in the first press because it flows abundantly. We need a lot of rain, Yisrael. We need a lot of rain. Uh, we need a lot of rain. That's why he must raise up the Norby to cause the heavens to be open and the rain of his Ruach to fall quickly upon us as a nation and as a people. And that is the truth. I want to recommend you all read this out of the book of Gileana. I thought I had it here, but I don't. Revelation chapter 14. And begin in verse 14. It's something that's very powerful there. And you read that, the first fruit of the wicked. But I want to close with these two verses here, these Two readings here in the book of Matitiyam, chapter 3, verse 11. We must understand, Yisraya, that Yahshua is going to refine us as a people. And he's going to refine us as one, as Ika. And the first thing he must do is remove the bad fruit. He must. He says here in Matitiyah 3, 11, I indeed, I indeed, Mikcha, I immerse you, as Yakahan says, you with water. To Teshuva, I immerse you. I take you down in Yahshua's name in the water. But he that comes after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall immerse you or michva you with the Ruach HaKodesh and with fire. That's what he did on the day of Shaut. He put out the power of the Ruach in a mighty way. And as cloven tongues of fire set upon them, 
They were all filled with the Ru'ah HaKodash. He says, whose fan or his winning fork is in his right hand. And he will thoroughly purge his floor. This is what he's going to do now. And he's going to gather his sweet into the garner. He's going to gather the true remnant into his bosom, into the garner. That's what he's going to do. He's not going to gather the wicked. That's why he's got his fan in his right hand. And he's going to find the shaft and everything that is not fruitful. He says, and he will burn up the shaft with unquenchable fire. That's what he's going to do. Let me read that quickly before we close in Revelation. Hallelujah. I want to read that. Revelation chapter 14. But I want to read this in my closing here and one other verse. Revelation chapter 14. Verse 14. Let me begin here. Yochanan says, And I looked and I beheld a white cloud and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having his head a golden crown and his hand a sharp sickle. And another Melach came out of the bed, the Sukkot, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud. He said, thrust in thy sickle, you hear that? And reap for the time is come for you to reap for the harvest of the earth is ripe. He let the wicked get ripe and all of that damnation. He said, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. He that sat on the cloud thrust in the sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. For another Melak came out of the Sukkot, which is in heaven, and he also having a sharp sickle. And another Melak came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and he cried with a loud voice, crying to him uh, that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust. In thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vines of the earth. For the grapes are fully ripe. Talk about the masses of the people. And the Melach thrust in his sickle in the earth. And he gathered the vine of the earth and cast, and he cast it into the great wine press of the wrath of Yah. And the wine press was trodden. Without the city, and the blood came out of the wine press, even unto the horse's bridle, uh, by the space of three thousand, by the space of a thousand six hundred uh, furloughs, by two hundred miles, six feet high. He's gonna press out their firstborns. Did not Yah destroy the firstborn? In Misraim, his pattern has never changed. He wants the first fruit, Yisrael, and he demands it. He's not asking. Uh, he demands it. And we must bring the sheaf offering unto Yah that our hands, our hearts, our minds are lifted up unto him. I want to close with the true offering. That we must bring this true offering unto Yah. In the book of Shemoth, Exodus 22, 29. It says, You, Yisrael, shall not delay to offer the Melea, the first of your right, Bashal. Shema 22, 29. You shall not delay to offer the first of your right fruits and of your liquors or your dama or your juices of the wine press or the fine press juice. And not only the dhamma mean the wine press, but your tears. We show over the first fruit of our tears. That's what this occasion is for. That we have respect unto Yah. You shall not delay. You shall not delay to offer the first of your ripe fruit. And your liquors or your dhamma, your juices and your tears. He says, the firstborn. The firstborn. Of your sons shall you give. You shall not son. You shall entrust them to Yah. You shall give them, he said to me. Your firstborn of your son. He said, give them to me and trust me with them. That's what this is all about. Did he not entrust us with his 
firstborn of his begotten, of his bosom. So he commands us to give him the firstborn. And that's why the first fruit is vital and important. So let us, as we traverse toward the ingathering, dig around the tree and dung some. Dung some. Dung a little bit, all right? Put some dung around, all right? Yeah, go over there and get some of that uh, turkey dung. It stinks. That's what we smell like. Dung a little bit. And by the time of the ingathering, uh, you will see fruits. You will see fruit for the ingathering. Your shoe is coming. We must be ready, Yisra'ya. We can't be getting ready. We must get ready. There is no time for procrastination. There is no time for our pontification and our folly and our juvenile ways. We must get it right and get it right now. May Yah strengthen us on you that have joined us on this tremendous, beautiful occasion, the before the gathering of the first fruit, let us offer unto him that which satisfy his bosom, and that we bring our offering unto him of the first fruit of our labor. And you will know how beautiful your labor is by what kind of fruit you have. Yeah. Hallelujah. You look at someone else's vineyard and you see that it is nice and it's all uh, weeded. You know, the mailman says to me one day, he says, I love coming past you all's place just to look at the garden because it looks so organized and so right. So you will, you will garner from the labor and what you put in, that's what you'll get out. You put in corruption, you put no time in, you won't get anything. You got to put time in, whether you're gardening or raising flowers, whatever you do, you got to put time in. You're raising the flower of your bosom. You got to put time in. You got to put time in. And if you don't put time in, you're not going to garner anything. You got to put some time in. We put time in folly and lying and, and, and all kinds of stupid things, don't we? You got to put time in. That's what you got to do, Yisraeli. You got to put time in order for this garden, this garden, to, to bring forth fruit, this tree, we got to put time in. One more thing before I close. I got to read this. I think it's vital. Hallelujah. Can I read this quickly? And we're going to have some salmon, and we got some, some of the, uh, some, uh, uh, the, what is that, the pie? peach pie. If I eat some of that, I got to kick out 50. So I, can't, I know it's going to be tough. I asked him, could I eat a little of yogurt? He looks at me and says, yogurt? <laughs> Ain't nothing to yogurt. I know it isn't. But if I eat a piece of this pie, I got to kick out $50. So I got to wait to tabernacle. I think I can hold out. That's no big thing for me. Hallelujah. Have I been tempted? Well, uh, my flesh is always tempted. If I walk in the Ruach, then I will not fulfill the lust or the desire of my flesh. Can I read this and I will close? It says here, listen to it. You will know where it's at when I finish. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the way of sinner, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, those that mock Yah. But his delight is in the Torah of Yah, and the Torah, he doth meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water and bring forth his fruit in his season. We must bring forth fruit in this season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand in the judgment, nor the sin in the congregation of the Sadiq. For Yah knows the way of the Derek of the Sadiq, but the way of the wicked shall perish. So if we walk in the Torah of Yah, we shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, and we shall bring forth our fruit in due season. So we must allow our hearts to be nurtured by the Torah in order for us to bring forth fruit abundantly much for when he comes he's coming for the first fruit that's what he's coming for may the riches of your rest upon you all they strengthen you all long all right yeah barak be encouraged on this fruitful day let us stand to our feet 
as we turn toward the city of promise, whereby as long as we're in this bondage, we shall pray. We lift our sheaf offering unto you today. Our hands, we told you for Yeshua, we brought you for Torah, for life, for strength. Guide us, touch us all, feed us, keep us, Yah. Preserve Yisrael, Yah. Restore your majesty back unto your elect, your people. Guide us in the light of your Torah and strengthen us that we may continue in your way. We told you for this Shaot, this great blessed day, in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, and we offer respect of offering. Hallelujah! 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 Yabarak Yisrael, Shalom.